choir one more round of applause. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Once again, we welcome everyone here to worship on this Sunday, this the day that the Lord has made, and we are glad in it. Uh, for those who are inside the car, you shall you can uh, tune in to FM 89.9, 89.9 to listen if you don't want to uh, let the windows down. I was about to, uh, I was about to say roll the windows down, but y'all too high for loopy. Y'all don't roll the window down. Y'all got buttons and stuff in the car now, but that's all right. That's all right. Uh, just a few announcements. We, we actually have a little bit longer of a announcement period this morning because there's so much going on. Uh, uh, as we uh, as we talked about last uh, last week, uh, we are uh, observing in the month of October. Uh, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and uh, we are remembering all of those we have lost, all of those who continue to battle. But more than that, all of those miracles that who are still in our midst. That though breast cancer showed up, you are still here. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Uh, the Gospel of John teaches us that Christ told the disciples that greater things than these you will do. And we are seeing miracles. We always think about walking on water and we think about all the different things turning water to wine. But there are miracles in our midst, and I'm glad about it. Amen. So thank you so much to all of those who woke up and you put on your pink today, did the best I could. And, and just so some of you sisters know, I was looking for something green. I was looking for something green to go with it. That's, this pink and green was on my mind this morning. Amen. Amen. I ain't mad at the Delta, but it's pink and green today. It's pink and green. I'm in trouble now. I lost some of my amens. I, I lost some of my amen. amen. That's all right. But the pink and green is with me. They still with me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, let me get back to my script. Get back to my script. If you did not stop laughing, it ain't funny. Uh, 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 if you did not turn in your flu challenge form last Sunday, please do so um, uh, today. Uh, or remember to bring it with uh, we hope you remember to bring it with you today but we do need all of the flu challenge uh, uh, forms back in uh, I am now going to invite and I know she's a, I'm going to have a little trouble so I'm going to have to step to the side because there's a delta coming and she won't be talking about pink and green she will not she will not she loves pink and green but it ain't as good as red it ain't as good as Red. That's what I'm thinking. So we, won't you please put your hands and your horns together for Sister Michelle Rucker, the half of the health minister. Good morning, Ebenezer. Reverend is really going to get in trouble. But we will say, Delta's well pink with a purpose all right. All right. and our purpose is for all of us whether you pink green red blue yellow it doesn't matter your color we support here at Ebenezer October being breast cancer awareness month we have done this on an annual basis we joined the, um, na the nation in celebrating this particular month a uh, reverend has kind of stolen a lot of what I had that I was going to say, and that's quite all right, because I just want to reiterate the fact that there are miracles among us. As much as we pay attention to prevention and screening, there are some that did not have those items, but still was um, plagued with the disease, but they overcame. What Ebenezer wanted to do today is to recognize those individuals who are still among us known as breast cancer survivors. Um, the year of 2020 has been a different year for a lot of us. And the pandemic has affected breast cancer awareness, research, and all of the activities that go along with it. But one of the things we must remember is that we cannot 
be taken in by pandemic to the point that we forget other items that are going on. Breast, breast cancer does not and will not stand still. We must stay on the battlefield of trying to support all of the efforts that will bring about the eradication and a cure for this disease. Um, there are people among us, as Reverend said, that are miracles, and we just wanted to take the healthcare ministry an opportunity to recognize those people. We had asked for all breast cancer survivors to turn their names into the office. So the names that I am about to call are those that uh, had an opportunity to call in, but we know that there are others among, among us, and we recognize you as well. We celebrate you, but more than that, we give God all the glory, all the honor, and the praise for you being here today. And it is our hope and our prayer that you will be here next year when we do this celebration again. The names that I have that I would like to recognize today is Ada Mosley. As the names are called, and there's Ada's daughter there, we are releasing balloons. The next person is Miss Hortense Lee. Mary Burton. Vicki Cosby. Connie Woodall. Aaron Johnson. Linda Edwards. Vivian Corey and Mary Miller. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross says, the most beautiful people we have known are those who have known defeat, known suffering, known struggle, known loss, but have found their way out of the depths. These persons have an appreciation, a sensitivity, and an understanding of life that fills them with compassion, gentleness, and a loving concern. Beautiful people do not just happen, they evolve. Thank you for the opportunity to recognize these uh, members. We celebrate you, but more than that, we thank God for you. Amen, we are thankful for the health ministry here, the Ebenezer Baptist Church West. So thankful for the leadership and thank you for helping us to remember, to remember that we serve not just a risen Savior, but a Savior who has all power, the power of life in his hands. This, third, this, uh, this week, this Friday, October 23rd at 6.30, we will gather in the parking lot for the annual Relay for Life Cancer Luminary event. And there are white bags. There are white bags down front. We ask each and every one of you who has been affected by cancer whatever way, that you have lost a loved one, please pick up a bag, decorate the bag, and bring it back to the church. Bring it to the church by October 22nd, which is Thursday by 2 p.m., as they will all be lit for Friday evening. There's no cost to participate but we do ask that donations be brought so that for each bag, all monies that will be collected will go into a, a check that will go to benefit breast cancer research. So we just ask that you please spread the word. This is not, we love Ebenezer Baptist Church West. We know that 205 North Chase Street is where God lives. But this is not an Ebenezer Baptist Church West event. This is a community event. And so we invite any and everyone 
who's been affected, who's lost a loved one to cancer, please come by. We will light up all of West Athens if you come by and drop a bag off. In that same vein, we announced last week that we were going to be partnering with the Piedmont Athens Regional Medical Center in an effort that's called Faith, the Faith and Medical Fellowship for Better Health Kick. Uh, I need to go back. Faith and Medical Fellowship for Better Health. The kickoff is today. And for an overview of this health initiative, the whole program, I'm going to invite Dr. Pippin, who's a lung specialist and an ICU physician at Piedmont Athens Regional Medical Center. So won't you please put your hands together for Dr. Pippin. Thank you, and God bless you. My name is James Pippin, and I am originally from Ghana, West Africa, but I am one of you. We come from the same family, and we belong to the same God, and as a result of that, what we do for you here will be counted as what we've done for the body and the fellowship of God. It is in that spirit that we want to embark on this exciting opportunity to partner with you to make sure we keep our bodies healthy so that we can continue to worship our God and to continue to do the things he has called us to do. Without healthy bodies, we cannot be as effective in the Great Commission, which asks us to reach out to everyone and to draw them into the kingdom of God. So along those lines, this exciting opportunity is going to be a health fair that we believe will be the beginning of a journey that we will take together with you. And the goal of that journey is so that we can stay healthy, we can stay productive, we can continue to do the work that God has called us to do. And in doing so, we will make our lives better and the lives of our children and our children's children much better than they would be if we did not embark on that journey. So I'm going to tell you a few things about how we hope to embark on that journey. The first step is a health screening fair that we hope will kick off next Sunday. Now, it is a 10-week program that we hope to embark on. And the beginning will be next Sunday, and the formal end of that program would be December 20th. But we do not stop there, or don't plan to stop there. We want to make sure that this continues even after the official program that we have. So specifically, next Sunday, we will be bringing a total of 30 doctors, nurses, and medical assistants to this parking lot from, from 8 o'clock till 9.30. We will be conducting health screening, free health screening exams on three of the most common conditions that tend to affect our community. That is hypertension, obesity, and diabetes. We will be checking your blood pressures. We will be checking your blood sugars. We will be checking or giving you um, tape measures so that you can measure your waist circumference. And the goal of all of this is to make sure we know where we stand right now. 
Many of these conditions are silent. People are walking around without knowing they have them. And the first step to doing something about something is being aware of it being there or not being there. Because if we miss out on those early opportunities, it becomes extremely difficult once complications develop, once the problem gets bigger, it becomes much more difficult to control. So we want to start by first identifying if there's a problem. If there is no problem, then we want to teach you things that you can do to stay well. If there is a problem, we want to give you access to our community care clinic where we take all forms of patients, whether you are insured or uninsured, to make sure that there is a way to keep you well if you have a problem. In the end, we want to take it beyond this church. Your church was chosen as the first church for this pilot program, but we want to take it to the reaches of Athens and beyond, reaching out to our community to make sure that we keep ourselves well so that we can be productive for ourselves and for our children and we can pass on good health and a good quality of life for those who come after us. So I encourage you very, very, very strongly, please be a part of this. It comes at no cost to you and there is a great benefit that you can gain from participating, and please spread the word that it starts here, but we hope to take it beyond this place to the reaches of Athens and even beyond Athens. So we thank you for the opportunity to partner with you. This is truly a partnership. We are not here to tell you what to do. We know that you are going to take your health into your own hands, but we want to work with you to keep you from getting ill and to keep you as strong and as healthy as you can be. And for those who are already dealing with illnesses, we want to make it a little easier for you to deal with those illnesses. So we look forward to seeing you all and please bring people within your family and friend circle because all will be invited and we are going to do everything we can to make your health situation a lot better. And this is just the beginning. This is not the end by any means. We hope that we can go forward together, realizing a healthy family is one that can be the most productive and can really get together and worship and grow in the Lord. As long as we have health, we can do all the things that God has called us to do. So I thank you very much for your attention, and we look forward to what is coming next week. God bless you. One more time, please show your appreciation for Dr. James Pippen. What a mighty God we serve. I want to say a personal word of thanks to Dr. Pippen. There are others who are here. And they're all over. And we're so thankful that you two have not just decided to be here today physically, but because of what is being done, it transcends the physical. Because you can be here and not be present. We thank you so much for caring enough that you would help us in this health initiative. As COVID struck, it knew no boundaries, no race, but our community was hit especially hard, black folk. And principally that is because of all of the pre-existing, the underlying conditions. So that when one more thing was added, 
many of our loved ones, their bodies could not stand. And so this, the next 10 weeks, as Dr. Pippen said, this is, it begins here, but I'm so thankful it won't end here. Every church, every organization in Athens and beyond, we keep telling you that Ebenezer is not an Athens church. This is the Athens Regional Church. But we want to make sure that we take care of our bodies. For the past several weeks, we've talking about dealing with the things that have been dealing with us, not just physically in our bodies, but in our minds. past couple of weeks have been particularly special as we talked about depression and its ravaging impacts on our lives. And it was my intention, my intention, this Wednesday to move on. We've talked about grief. We talked about loneliness. In the past three weeks, depression. Next, we will talk about powerlessness, but we won't start this week. I have located for Bible study this week a psychiatrist by the name of Dr. Michael Pratz up in Syracuse, New York. He's a dear friend. He's a great doctor. And so he will join us at 6 o'clock for Bible study this, this Wednesday. And I'm going to ask that we, I know we have a 6 o'clock and a 7 o'clock, but this week I want to do a joint session of Bible study where Dr. Michael Pratt will join us. Those who have specific questions, I'm going to ask that you would email me your questions, whatever questions you'd like to have for Dr. Dr. Pratt, see, because as a couple of you have heard directly from me, I've got a lot of degrees, working on another one. But my doctorate tells me that there comes a time when I need to refer you to somebody else. We can talk about scripture, we can pray, Part of my education tells me that there's some things, as your pastor, it is better that I refer you to someone else. So this Wednesday, those who may have questions, please send those questions. We will take some, but I want to make sure that we make Wednesday's Bible study lesson as beneficial as possible. So again, this Wednesday will be a joint session between the 6 and the 7 o'clock. And I'm praying that the Holy Spirit, as the Holy Spirit is present here today, the Holy Spirit will again be present with us in Bible study. Amen? Amen. This Friday, this Friday, oh, I'm sorry, Saturday, next Saturday, October 24th, on Friday night, remember at 630, we'll join for the Relay for Life event. But on Saturday, from 10 o'clock to 12.30, we're going to meet at Ebenezer Baptist Church West to beautify our church campus. We're inviting everyone to come out. God has blessed Ebenezer 142 years, blessed us immeasurably and undeservedly so. And so on next Saturday, we'll come together in partnership with, with the Athens, uh, Athens College of Ministry and their Serve Athens event. And we're going to begin serving Athens by beautifying our campus. So come out for two and a half hours on next Saturday. We look forward to you. And I don't just see that as something that we'll do because we have to. We're going to do it 
because we want to. Because as a family, how our church looks matters. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, Ebenezer. We thank you so much for your indulging these critically important announcements today. We try to limit the announcements, but this is just too important for us. The last thing that I want to share with you is we've been here since the second Sunday of June. And we have, we've foregone our traditional black church Sunday go to meeting clothes. Amen, somebody. Amen. amen. We'll, prayerfully, we'll get back to it. We'll get back to it so the sisters can put your hats back on. Brothers can put on your three-piece suit. Deacon Johnson wear three-piece suit anyway. It don't matter. It don't matter. This brother comes stepping. But as it gets chillier outside, the football weather, just my dogs, we're going to bounce back. My dogs are going to bounce back. Don't y'all worry. Don't y'all worry. We setting Alabama up for the championship game. We, we just setting them up. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Roll tight. Keep on rolling. Keep on rolling. Keep on, keep on rolling. Amen. So, but, uh, <laughs> so last night was just a setup. So, but as it gets chillier outside, those who do want to bring your blanket and continue to sit outside, we want you to be adorned in your Believe sweatshirts. This is not a fundraiser. It's only for those who wish to have a sweatshirt like pastors. I'm going to have a hoodie, though. I'm going to have a hoodie. Um, for those who desire to purchase one, please come by the church. There will be crew neck like this one. There will be hoodies. Um, uh, the crew necks are $12. The hoodies will be $15. Uh, for all of the sizes, um, for 2X, uh, it will be an additional $3. And for any sizes above 2X, it's an additional $5. We wear the Believe t-shirts, the Believe masks, not just for ourselves. Certainly we, our church theme, believe. It's what we do. We serve a risen Savior. And we believe. He, we believe he has all power in his hands. We believe he makes crooked ways straight. Rough places smooth. We believe. First John chapter 3 verse 2 says, Already we are the sons and daughters of God, but it does not yet appear what we shall be. We believe that the best for Ebenezer Baptist Church West is yet to come. But I want you to know that as you walk around with your Believe t-shirts, your Believe masks, you're encouraging other people. You're telling them that in this season of life, you got to believe. You got to believe that better is possible. You got to believe that better is on the way. So we encourage you, if you want to, you can go to the website, order your sweatshirt. You can go to Realm, those who have downloaded the app. If you have not downloaded the app, please do so. Order it. Pay for it right there. And on the Realm app, when you go in there, it'll still say T-shirt, but you can pay for your sweatshirt there. We're grateful, Ebenezer Baptist Church West, to be here, even here in the chilliness under God's roof. We're thankful to God to be here.
Yes, we believe. We're going to hear from the choir. We're going to ask them to come now. We'll hear from them, after which we'll explore what doth say the Lord.
Those who have your Bibles, will you please open to the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 5, the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1, and it reads as thus. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes, and when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains. And the chains had been pulled apart by him, the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him and cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Also, he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, Send us to the swine that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Thus ended the reading of God's word. May it edify our souls. I want to put a tag on this text for just a little while of in his right mind. In his right mind. Jesus will show up where you are locked up and set you free. Jesus will show up where you are locked up and set you free. Mark 5 is one of my favorite chapters in all of the Bible. You see, Mark 5 comes right after Mark 4. That's new school math. But, but at the end of Mark 4, we have the, the, the storm on the Sea of Galilee where a squall came up and the disciples were afraid for their lives and they rushed down to Jesus to say, See, Master, carest thou not if we perish? Jesus got up and said, Peace, be still. And, and then he had a word of believing for the disciples. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? So we move from the storm on the outside to a storm on the inside in chapter 5. Uh, 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 this story reminds me not only of the Bible's relevance for today and the everyday lives of black people in America, but, under, but it underscores a serious issue. It's an issue that is prevalent to which none of us can claim to be immune. There, I say most everybody here today is affected in one way or another by mental illness. Certainly it is a taboo subject to, to be sure, uh, especially in the black community where historically we have had to suppress the negative forces and the negative pressures imposed upon us by those who sought in all 
too many cases to still dehumanize us. In my dissertation at Colgate Rochester Crozer Divinity School, I examined the self-esteem and belongingness, the cornerstones of our being in relationship both to our God and to those around us. And I made note in that dissertation of the fact that historically, the dehumanization of the oppressed is always an erroneous attempt by the oppressor to salvage some portion of his own humanity. Uh, that's just an example of uh, back when Dr. King in 1967 wrote his book, his book, uh, 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 Chaos or Community, Where Do We Go From Here? He talked about how black men who had no personhood, who received no respect outside of the house, had to try to enforce some kind of respect inside the house. That is mental illness, my brothers and sisters, and therefore herein lies the core of the dehumanization of blacks in this country beneath the surface of, uh, of dog whistle policies and politics of right-wing conservatives lay the heart of this very thought in a world where it is publicly considered to be passe. Uh, uh, publicly, I add that they no longer publicly endorse poll taxes uh, like asking those familiar questions that some of the seniors here might remember that how many bubbles are there in a bar of soap before you get to vote or they don't, they don't necessarily give you the brown paper bag test anymore if you're darker than the bag then you don't get to vote they don't do those kinds of things anymore but I find it hard to see the difference when just last year, Florida Republicans sponsored a bill that would require felons who sought and had received their voting rights back, they were required to pay back the state for the cost of their trials. And the less informed of us might even suggest that that is fair. But, the, but, but what that does to us is we miss the fact that it has nothing to do with paying for their trials. But what we are clueless about is that what the bill was seeking to do was it was an untoward attempt to backdoor the 24th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States of America. You see that 24th Amendment to the Constitution simply says that the right of citizens of the United States to vote in any primary or any other election shall not be abridged or by the United States or any state for any reason or failure to pay any poll tax or other kinds of taxes. They want to protect gun rights and stand your ground laws, but protecting the rights, the voting rights of the people who only recently got it back further tilt the justice system in favor of the rich and the wealthy who can pay for justice, who can pay for pardons. If you got friends in high places, it doesn't matter what you do in America because you can buy justice. Despite progress that has been made over the years, racism continues to have an impact on the mental health of blacks. Historically and, 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 and contemporary instances of, of the negative treatment that, that blacks have received has created a mistrust of authority, including police, many of whom have proven over time not to have the interests of blacks at heart. That does not say that all police officers are bad. It does not. In fact, most police are good, hard-working Americans and Christians. They go to work just like you. They do what they're supposed to do. But there's some rotten eggs in every... Oh, yeah. 
historical adversity, which includes slavery, sharecropping, and race-based exclusion for health, education, social and economic resources, all translates into the socioeconomic disparities that are experienced in the black community today. Socioeconomic status, in turn, is linked to the mental health that is impacted in the community. People are impoverished, homeless, pervasive incarceration, or they have substance abuse problems. All of these kind of issues put people at a higher risk for mental health issues. Y'all don't believe me? Listen to these statistics. 13.4% of the U.S. population, roughly 44 million people, identify themselves in this country as black or African American, according to the 2019 U.S. Census Bureau. Another 2.5% identify as multiracial. Of this number, approximately 6 million suffer from some form of mental illness that's diagnosed and undiagnosed. That's concerning to me, but that's only part of the simple fact that one in every five Americans, regardless of race, have some kind of mental illness. Mental illness is not a personal defect. I'm going to step back because I got to say that again, my brothers and sisters, mental illness is not a personal defect. It's a biological brain disorder. It's brought about in the black community by things like, uh, like, like major depression, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or even PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, or even if you know people like the Dr. Joy DeGroom, who is one of the country's leading the thoughts, uh, thought leaders uh, in the black community uh, on mental issues. Uh, she doesn't talk about PTSD. Uh, she talks about PTSS, uh, post-traumatic slavery syndrome. Uh, but I need you to know today uh, that there are folk in our community uh, who are more likely uh, because of these conditions uh, to be victims uh, of violent crime uh, inside the community uh, and outside the community. And exposure to violence, my brothers and sisters, increases the risk of developing a mental health condition. And guess what? Our children, black children, are more likely to be exposed to violence than any other group of children in this country. And because so often mental health disorders go under treated, blacks are more likely to experience certain factors that increase the risk for developing mental health conditions. Homelessness, my brothers and sisters, is but one of them. Right here in athens Clark County, 35.5% of residents live in abject poverty, more than double the national average of 30 percent, increasing the likelihood that they and their children will one day develop some form of mental illness. We've come today to, doubt, to talk just a little bit about dealing with some of the things that have been dealing with us. See, as we continue our discussion and our exploration of depression, uh, uh, I was led to Mark chapter 5. You see, some mental illness you can see. Some 
through mental illness, you can recognize when, when something is not quite right. But at other times, uh, you simply can't. Uh, mentally ill persons roam the streets of our community. Uh, they they, they, they uh, exhibit violent behaviors. Uh, they evoke the same fear uh, and, re and, and repulsion uh, that the brother in the text does. Uh, who are they? Uh, they are people who commit nuisance crimes in our community community. They are people who assault other people for no reason at all. They are also people who yell racist slurs and attack other people because they don't wear masks. It's people in high places claiming that good people are on both sides where clearly good people can't be on both sides. And that is also tells us that there are people with mentally mental health issues who say things rather than talking bad or talking down about nationalism in this country they make statements like stand back and stand by nationalism my brothers and sisters to be clear nationalism black or white is a mental health disorder it's an evil that must be rooted out if we gonna walk the walk that Jesus walked. These are people who walk up and down our streets infected with the false sense of superiority that changes how they see the world. But I contend right now that even the racists, even those who are prejudiced, even those so filled with hate, I contend right now that deep down on the inside beneath the rough edges there's a human being crying to get out a human being who's been broken who's been hurt who's been lost who's been abandoned who's confused but all thanks be to God that Jesus is alive all thanks to God that in Jesus Christ, there is hope, and I don't contend by any stretch of the imagination to let you know today that just coming to church is going to heal you. Coming to church and praying, don't you think that that's going to heal you? Church is where it all begins, where you can begin to get better, because God has sent some angels God has sent people who can heal you, people who can walk with you, people trained to deal with issues that back you up into the darkness of mental illness. Mental illness, my brothers and sisters, I'm sad to say it cannot be healed just by you praying. You got to pray, but then you got to get up Pray and do. Uh, won't you, won't you come with me to a hillside, a hillside in our text in the country of the Gadarenes. Uh, see, for, for, for right there in, in the Bible, the Holy Writ, there's a brother that I know we know. Tyrone. Ray Ray. Shorty Tim, Junebug, all that, that, he's right here. And he exemplifies what it means, first of all, to have a mental illness. And second of all, and this is the good news, what it means to be rediscovered by Jesus. And I know everybody here has it all together because y'all from Ebenezer Baptist Church West. Nobody here has any mental health issues. Nobody needs to be rediscovered. How do I know? Because your job title says so. The degrees on your wall say so. Your bank account says so. Your denial says so. But if you don't fall into the I'm good category, or better
better yet, even if you feel like you do fall into the I, I'm good category, don't, 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 don't leave just yet. Don't, don't crank your car up. Don't do any of that. Just, just humor me. And, and let's just pretend. Y'all know how we used to do Let's may like. Let's may like. Y'all, y'all ain't been saved all your life. This is, listen, listen, let's may like hanging up in the closet your Jimmy Choo shoes, your kept flawless smile, that there's some stuff in your life you don't want to talk about. We know it ain't true. We know it ain't true. It ain't true. But let's may like it for just the next few minutes. Otherwise, my sermon ain't going to make no sense to you. But can I pause for just a second to speak to somebody who knows they need to hear something right here? You didn't leave because I'm walking down your street. I'm about to come up your driveway. Watch this. Some, somebody needs to be reminded that I did say that Jesus rediscovered the brother in the text. Listen real close. Listen real close because he is discovered. Why? Why is he discovered? Because God don't make no junk. God doesn't make junk. Somebody here today has not been made to feel like the diamond God created you to be. Somebody here has been talked down to all your life. You've been berated. Folk talk over you. They talk around you. They haven't done a good job of building you up, but they do everything in their power to tear you down. But I need you to know today that when you come to Jesus, Jesus. When Jesus shows up on the shores of your life, you need to know that your ship has come in. He will rediscover you. He'll rediscover the you that God created you to be. So I got two or three things I need for y'all to remember about this text. The first thing I need you to see is that this brother was excluded. He was disconnected from the community around him. Mm -hmm. He was excluded. Disconnected. They, they diminished his imago Dei, the, the image of God in him that was meant to include him in the human family, yet they excluded him. 